Mask animations are perhaps the most used animation technique when it comes to interactive UI UX design. And for instance, at hello.cuberto.com, you could see these mask animation techniques being utilized all over the place. And in this video, I'm going to show you from seven different levels of difficulty how to pull off this technique. Now, first, before we get started with the code, I wanted to show you a very quick Figma prototype I created that really demonstrates how exactly this technique works. So if I click this, we'll see what's happening here. So essentially on the left is what you have in the actual browser. And on the right, I'm showing you exactly how this technique works. This red outline here is basically its own div element. It's a parent element of this type element. And this element will have an overflow of hidden and then we take whatever it is that we want to reveal and we give that a transform translate X or translate Y property where it simply moves it out of view from the actual mask. And so this is the whole idea behind this and it could become really cool, especially when you add it to a lot of different elements. Here's our very first example. If I refresh, not that exciting, is it? But that this is the very first, the most simple, basic, technique and we're gonna work our way up after this. So let's take a look real quickly at the markup to see what this looks like. There's no JavaScript, it's just HTML and CSS. So the pertinent HTML is gonna be right here in this little block. So we have a div class of mask, all right? And that mask is in CSS gonna have a rule set with just one property, it says overflow hidden, that's all it is. And then we have the element that we want to animate from this mask position. In this case, it's an H1 element and by default, Initially, we simply use transform Y negative 100% to move it up above it and that way it becomes out of view. So then in our SAS, all we have is our mask right here, which is overflow hidden. And then we have our H1 element and specifically the transform translate Y negative 100%, which means it's hidden initially. And then we use an animation called slide down for 1.7 seconds and to make the animation more interesting instead of a linear animation, we're using cubic bezier here. Pro tip, if you just simply say cubic bezier in the context of an actual pro uh, property, you can see it gives you some default ones right here. There's also cubic be bezier generators as well on the internet. And then we're simply just moving it down in this keyframe animation back to its original position. That's all it is, it is super, super simple. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the second example if I revert back here. All right, so let's refresh. All right, so here we just have two different animations. It makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more complex. So we have a headline, a subheadline, and they're both animating in. I'll zoom up even more just so you can see exactly what's happening. A little bit janky because I'm, I scrolled in or zoomed in quite a bit. And what that looks like, again, very simple. We simply have this time a mask here for our first element of headline, and then the subheadline has a mask element as well. Each have a div class of hide this time. And if I go to our main 2.sass, by the way, you can access all these project files in the YouTube description. And this time, we simply take our mask, which is already overflow hidden, and then we have our hide, right here and this time I'm using shorthand properties or not shorthand properties but specific uh, like animation name duration etc and again everything's pretty much the same that we had before we're moving them out and then this time we're just still using the slide down animation now the only thing that's going to be slightly different is our paragraph we're adding an animation delay of 0.2 seconds so that it happens slightly after the headline Again, very, very simple demonstration right here. Nothing too exciting at this point. Let's check out the third example. So in this example, we have multiple lines of type. All right, and they're all coming in almost at the same time. All right, so let's take a look exactly how we achieve this time. Again, we're not using any type of JavaScript animation library, which we will shortly. Um, but as you can see, we're just having a text two, text three class right here on the uh, resulting lines of type. And notice each line of type is not just one paragraph element. They're all gonna be separated into their own elements so that, that we can go ahead and animate those individually. So if I take a look at main uh, three right here, for example, three, 
you'll see that uh, we have pretty much the same thing as before. But if we wanted to be able to add a little bit of a delay of say 0.2 seconds or 0.4 seconds on text two and text three, we can go ahead and save that. And you can see they slightly come in at uh, different times, when, especially when you're comparing right here, lines two and three compared to one. All right, again, nothing that exciting. Let's check out number four. All right, so number four is almost exactly identical to number three, except we're using JavaScript this time. So if I go to index four, we have the same exact HTML pretty much as the previous example. However, this time we are utilizing GSAP right here. All right, so GSAP is the GreenSock animation platform. It makes creating more complex sequence-based animations a lot more easier rather than just having to time everything yourself manually in CSS. So all we're doing is we're saying right here, GSAP2 hide. All right, so all the elements that have the class of hide, one, two, three, four, it's all of our pieces of type essentially. We're just dis defining a duration of 1.4 seconds. Uh, we're saying y uh, is zero, which we're using the to method. You can also use a from method. And then a stagger of 0.1 between all of them, which will create a stagger animation between each one of them. And then just a custom easing of power two. All right, so we can make this a little bit more obvious about how stagger actually works by increasing this value just for demonstration purposes. So if I change this from 0.1 to 0.7 and I go ahead back, you could see how much slower each line is. But you can see how much easier it makes your life because you don't have to rely on CSS to create all these specific timings by animations manually. All right, so just let's revert that back to 0.1 and it really just gives you a nice very nice sort of um, animation for your UI. All right, now let's check out number five. This time we're adding an actual image. So you can obviously utilize this technique in order to mask animations here uh, or images and photographs, not just type. So let's take a look real quickly at that one. And that's just index five at HTML. We have a image source of book.jpg. And then if you come down here, we'll see that we have our image. And this time, we're utilizing the GreenSock timeline. So this is for more robust timeline-based animations. And we can chain these two methods or from methods in order to create more complex animations. So for the image element, all we're doing, if we look at main five, if I take a look at our image, you'll see we're using clip path polygon right here. What that's doing, if I show you very quickly, CSS Clippy, this is a nice clip path maker. If I choose trapezoid and I just get this all the way out and then I hide the image, this is what we want initially. You can come down here and then just copy the HTML. Again, it's, it's real small down there. And then that's what I did to paste it into right here. This basically hides that image initially. Then we go back to Clippy and I come over here, sorry, and we pull these back down. It'll adjust the property value. And this property value is where we go ahead and right here, and we paste that right here. Notice the camel path, uh, the, the, the camel type right here, um, clip path. Uh, we don't write it as a hyphen path like in CSS. We remove the hyphen and just put a capital P. And then we're also scaling it just to make the image look a little bit interesting. So you can chain multiple uh, properties to animate at the same time, same duration, et cetera, et cetera. And that is how we achieve that, achieve that effect. Very, very cool. We'll look at it one more time before heading out to the next example. All right, now let's check out number six. Number six is exactly the same as the previous one. However, notice the lines of type right here. So if I hit Shift F5, we'll see that each letter, each character is animating in individually. 
So how the heck do you do that one? All right, well, I'll show you exactly how to do that. So if I get rid of, let's close all these out. We go to index six. We'll see that this time we're integrating a new script and this is called split type. And it's a free NPM script. You can just copy this and utilize it in your project. Now what's happening here in the JavaScript is a little bit more complex. So essentially, we're taking and we're creating a constant called text lines and we're gonna use query selector all to grab text one, text two, and text three. That's a class that's applied to each line of type right here. After that, we use for each on text lines and then we use our split type plugin that we integrated and we simply specify types as chars or characters. What that does, if I show you in the browser in the Dev Inspector real quickly, if I hit F12, we'll see each one of these has its own HTML element. What split type does is it creates all those elements individually for us automatically. That way we don't have to sit there and do that in our HTML markup by default. So each one has its own HTML element or DOM element so that we can then animate that with GSAP. And so the way that works is once we have a class called char, which is the class that it automatically gives each one of those characters, we can then use GSAP from Y% negative 100. So it's gonna, going to set the initial uh, position of these of being out of view and then it will animate it into whatever its original default view is which is going to be y percent basically zero and then we stagger it with 0 0.01 so if we change this to 0 0.1 it's going to take a long time to go through each character but i'll show you just for demonstration purposes as you can see it's very slowly putting these all in and this would be bad you wouldn't want to make somebody sit there and wait that long. So 0 0.01 I find works really well and it's a nice smooth animation. So if I refresh, ah, oh, it's so nice. Now one final example is gonna be an index seven. And for this one, I just had fun. I, and this doesn't even utilize the mask technique, but we just have this little frame that's coming in here. You can go ahead and check out index7.html and the main7.sass file to see exactly how I integrated this frame and worked it into the GSAP timeline as well. So hopefully you enjoyed that. You can grab this access to, the, to all of these examples by clicking the, the, the second link here in the YouTube description. Definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash AF for advanced front ends course, which is going to be releasing sometime this year, and I'm actively working on it. And of course, if you wanna learn UI UX design, definitely check, check out the UI UX course here at designcourse.com, where you're gonna learn so much for perfect for beginners, for learning UI UX design in an interactive format. I won't talk much more about this, but you can check it out as well in the top link of the YouTube description. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.